Hello everyone and welcome to another After Effects tutorial. This time around I'll teach you how to create an old film effect for your footage. I will show you how to change the tonality, add scratches, create your own dust using the brush tool, add expressions and much more. So inside After Effects with a new file open, I have imported a footage that we're going to turn into an old film, which involves several steps. So we're going to start this off by changing the tonal values of the footage and skew our colors. So for that, I'm going to create an adjustment layer and I'm going to run the shortcut, which is Control Alt Y or Command Option Y on the Mac. They're going to press Enter Return to rename these two, perhaps Color Change hit enter return. Then I'm going to go up to the effect menu, color correction. I'm going to bring up the very powerful curves. Okay. So let's make this a bit bigger here so we can see what I'm doing. There you go. And then briefly, I want to talk about uh, the, the curves, how it works. So for example, this point right here is the white point, which is the brightest point. This one is the black point which represents the darkest point. So in this case, I'm going to take this white point. I'm going to bring this down here to reduce my brightest area. In this case, the highlights. There we go. And I'm going to take this black point here and I'm going to bring this up to reduce the shadows. Okay. But let's go ahead and take this even further by selectively adjust the tonal values for the red, green, and blue channels. So I can do this from here. I can go ahead and choose the red channel. And I'm going to start again here from the white point. So moving the red slider down from the white point, it will reduce the reds in the highlights. And this way we're adding cyan color. See that? So I don't want to go very far. I'm just going to go around here. Now moving the red slider up from the shadows, which is the black point here, it will add more red. And if I move it this way, it's going to add cyan color. In this case, it's just it's going to move this up here. And then we have before and after. Okay, so far so good. Let's go ahead and use the green channel. Again, moving the green slider down from the white point, it will reduce the green color in the highlights and add red because opposite of green is red. Okay. There you go. Now moving the green slider up from the shadows, it will add more green. Okay. Color to the shadows. And if I move it to the right, it will reduce the green, add more red. So I would just want to perhaps bring it around here. So that will be before, after. Let's go to the last one, to the blue channel. So moving the blue slider from the white point, it will reduce the blue color in the highlights. And I like that. And add yellow because opposite of blue is yellow. See that? There you go. Now, Moving the blue slider up from the shadows, it will add more blue color to the shadows. And then if I move it to the right, it will reduce the blue color and add more yellow. So I guess this is very subjective. Okay. Depends what you're going for. This is before and after. Again, there's a lot of ways you can play around with this. But I believe this is a good beginning for the old film effect. So we color toned our footage. Now let's go ahead and work in creating scratches, dust and what have you. So for that, I'm going to create a new solid that will be control Y or command Y. I'm going to give it a name of scratches, make a comp size and color is quite important. We should have black here. So I'm going to just click OK. And then I'm going to go up to the effect menu noise and grain, and I'm going to use the very powerful fractal noise effects inside After Effects. There's so much you can do with this effect here, the fractal noise. So let's take it for a spin. 
The first thing I'm going to do is increase the contrast because I want to have a lot of defined areas of black and white inside the noise. Okay. And then I'm going to bring down the brightness. Now, how much? Well, we're going to know this very soon. First, I'm going to open up the transform here and I'm going to uncheck where it says uniform scaling. I want to do that because I want to change the, the width and the height separately. So for the width, I'm going to go for one. Because don't forget, we're going for scratches. So basically, we're going for something vertical, very thin. And here, I'm going to up the height to something like 10,000. You see that? Now, here's the thing. The brightness makes this. So if I increase, you get this. But if I decrease this quite a lot, then we're going to get to what we want. So let's say around that. Now, that's one thing. The other thing is that we need to actually blend this with the background. So for that, I need to change the blend mode. So if you see what I see here, what I have here, then what I need to do is I need to click on the toggle switches and modes, then I will be able to see my modes here. So the blend right now mode is normal. I'm going to change this to add. So that's one thing. And then if I ramp preview this with a space bar, as you can see, nothing animates. Well, we need to animate the scratches. And we're going to do this by animating the evolution. Here's the evolution. So how do we do that? Well, we're going to create an expression. So for that, I'm going to hold down the Alt key or the object in the Mac. I'm going to click on that. And here's, we get the expression, which we need to change to time times, I'm going to go for 200. It depends how fast do you want this to be. So if you notice here, with these large changes in evolution value over a short period of time, we get those flashing. You see, the streaks are flashing. Okay, the scratches. And that's what I'm after. That's one thing. Another thing you can do if you wish, again, depends your footage here. You might want to bring this down just a bit. Okay. It, again, it depends the footage you're using. So we added some scratches to our footage. Now it's time for some dust. I'm actually going to do this manually using the brush tool. So let me show you how. First, we're going to create a new solid, Control Y or Command Y. I'm going to rename this solid to dust, make comp size. And for background color, instead of black, I'm going to choose white and click OK. All right. OK. So as I mentioned before, we're going to use the brush tool. Just make sure under the window menu, the brushes and the paint window is visible. As well as if you wish to paint here, we need to isolate the layer. So I'm going to double click to isolate the layer. So now you can actually start painting. But before we do that, let's look at the settings here. So we are going to paint with black on white here. And then for duration, instead of constant, I'm going to go to custom when I'm going to go every two frames. OK. And then under the brushes here, I need to choose a very small brush. I'm going to go for the second one, which is hard around three pixels. I'm just going to bring the hardness down just a bit to be just a little soft. There you go. Just make sure you're in the beginning of the timeline. All right. So we can start creating our dust. OK, so just going to randomly here creating some dust. OK, and just be as random as you can. This you can be very playful here. You can be very creative and creating just random stuff. Okay, it depends how grungy do you want your movie to be at the end of the day. So just keep creating those. Almost done. Again, I'm just showing you here how to create those random stuff and so on. Okay, so I'm gonna bring this to the very beginning of the timeline. Under the effects controls of dust, just make sure that you have paint on transparent checked so we can see the brush strokes. 
back on the composition. Here are the brushes. And the thing is, they're a, bit, a bit, they're a little bit too pronounced. So I need to actually blur them a little bit. So for that, under the effects and presets, I'm going to type here camera. And I'm looking for under the blur and sharpen the camera lens blur. Double click on that. And well, the effect is quite too much here, the blur radius. So instead of five, I'm going to bring down to two or 2.3 perhaps, like so. Ram preview this. Here they go, they appear. All right. And there you go. Of course, you can spend some extra time on your own and redefine this even more according to your liking. So now let's go ahead and add some grain to our footage. And I'm going to do this actually directly right here on the top of the footage. So I'm going to go up to the effect menu and let's see noise, add grain. All right. Now the preview here is only on this window. And of course I want to change this under the viewing mode to the final output. So now we can see the whole footage having the, the grain. Now for the preset, Okay, there are a lot of presets you can choose from. Basically, these are simulating different types of film. So you can experiment on your own. I'm just gonna choose the Kodak Expression 500T. There we go. Definitely, I'm going to up the intensity a bit. And perhaps the size, but very small, very little, not too much. Okay, that's the size of the grain. Now, if I play this, it's going to put a lot of strain on my processor. So I'm going to bring down the resolution to half. Okay, you can see the grain here. That's one thing I can do. Another thing I can do is actually go to under the animation and bring down the animation, the speed of how this, the grain animates. So I'm going to bring this to half, 0.5. Definitely animate smoothly and just ramp preview with this again. And it seems to be a little better, but of course, let me scrub this to the beginning. Okay, so I like what I see and I'm very okay with that. Now, another thing I want to do is actually I want to make this film, the whole thing, just a little bit of, even more washed out. So I'm going to go back to the effect menu, color correction, and I'm going for tint. Now, tint, as you can see, desaturates. It transforms full color image into two color tone. I don't want to leave this as is. This is too much. This, I don't want this to be black and white. So I'm going to bring down the amount of tint to perhaps I don't know, 28, 30%. You get the idea. So that will be before and after. So I can actually increase this a bit before, after. Okay, there you go. Just a, a bit of a tint here, like so. So for this next step, I'm going to add a light overlay onto the footage. So again, we're going to create a new solid. I'm going to rename this to light overlay, like so. And again, make home size, but for color, instead of white, I'm going to change back to black. All right, so then I'm going to go up to the effect menu. Let's see, um, noise and grain. And again, we're going to use this wonderful fractal noise. This time around, we're going to change things around. Definitely, we're going to bring up the contrast. I'm going to bring down the brightness, but I can be playful on this. I don't know the final number here. I'm just going to and wing it. Uh, but definitely what I need to do is, well, we need to go under the transform and I'm going to leave uniform scaling checked, but I'm gonna scale this up quite a bit. So I'm gonna type in 3000, there you go. Again, this is where the brightness comes in. Depends how bright you want this to be. But of course this is static, so we need to animate. So we're gonna animate again the 
evolution. So I'm going to hold down the Alt key or the Option key, and we're going to click on this stopwatch here to create an expression. And we're going to type wiggle, open parenthesis, 1, 250. So the number one is the frequency per second, the speed per one second, and the number number 250 represents the amplitude value, which is basically how much your value can change. All right, so let's go ahead and play this. There you go. So that's one thing. Another thing is that, of course, we need to blend this to the background so we can see the footage. So I'm going to use again the same blending mode, which is add. There you go. And as you can see, this is quite pronounced here. So the first thing I'm going to do is, you know, you can play with these numbers, but let me go ahead and change the color. Okay. So for that, I'm going to introduce a new effects. I'm going to go up to the effect menu, color correction, colorama. And by default, you get, of course, this light here, which you can change under the output cycle. And let's bring this up here so we can see all the presets. And there are a lot of wonderful presets you can use depending your footage. So I'm going to go down all the way to sepia 2. All right. So let me just run preview this. Okay. I like this, but I think it's, again, a little bit too pronounced. So I'm going to blend this with the original. There we go. Okay. And again, this is where the fractal noise brightness comes in. So let's say you're here and you want to bring this down a bit more. Okay. Again, it all depends the footage that uh, you're using. So to close this up for this After Effects tutorial, the last thing I'm going to add is just a frame around the footage to come even closer to the old film effect. So for that, again, I'm going to create a new solid, which I'm going to rename this to frame. Click OK. And then I'm going to go ahead and use the rounded rectangle tool. So I'm going to double click to apply this here. And as you can see, here's this corner radius, right? But of course, as you can see, we cannot see the footage. So here we can change the under the frame here, we can change the behavior. Right now we have the add mode. In this case, I'm going to change to subtract mode. And here's the footage. I'm going to bring in the frame even closer inside, inwards. So under the mask and under the mask expansion, I'm going to bring a negative value here. There you go. Definitely, I want to feather this a bit. All right. So let's play this. Something along those lines. Now, here's the thing. Back on those days, probably the person that took that uh, footage was on a handheld device, which means there was some shake in the camera. So what we're going to do is Let's pretend that happened then. We're going to go to the footage. We're going to press P for position. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click and I'm going to separate these dimensions. And I'm only going to work on the Y position. In this case, I'm going to create another expression. So I'm going to hold down the Alt key or the Option key. And then I'm going to type here, wiggle, open parenthesis, 1, 4. So. Let's play that. And there is some shake in the camera. Of course, depends the footage you have and how much you want to move it and so on. So here's an idea, everyone, how to create an old film effect, techniques that you can use for your next After Effects project. Thank you for spending time with me. Let me know if you have any questions below the comments section. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and share the knowledge.